speak and talk about something that's uh, really uh, burdening my heart. It's, actually, it's breaking my heart. And I'm not sure that I'm going to get through this video, but I'm going to try. A few weeks back, a friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, uh, told me about a story about someone that he was counseling. He was a retired uh, veteran, military man, who was in the Special Forces. I forgot which one it was, the SEALs or, or, or one of those uh, Special Forces. And this pastor was counseling this man who had, with his bare hands, killed 46 people. This man was not a happy camper. This man was tormented in his soul. This man was, was drowning in guilt. This man had a, had a decision that, that he, he couldn't deal with. And my pastor friend, who was a, a, a traditional Christian with the traditional gospel, he had no hope for this man. Imagine yourself as a military person going through boot camp and going through all that special training that, that special forces go through to become an automatic killing machine. To kill a person because your commanding officer said so, um, with no moral conscience whatsoever, because your government said that this person was an enemy, um, you go and are trained and brainwashed to kill a person that you've never seen before. You have no idea where that, or how many kids that person has, what kind of a life that person was. He's labeled an enemy <clears throat> and you're trained to kill him. And this man killed 46 strangers um, for duty, for country, for the flag. And in his life now, he's looking at becoming a Christian. He has guilt on his heart. He has blood on his hands. And he's looking for some sort of a forgive, some sort of forgiveness. There are thousands and thousands of soldiers who try to bury that guilt, who try to bury the, the, the terrible things that they witnessed and had to do in war. They drowned it with drugs. They drowned it with alcoholism. They drowned it with perversions, sexual perversions. They drowned it with gambling. They drowned it with eating. And none of it saves. None of it sets them free. And this man who killed 46 men now is looking for freedom from guilt. My pastor, he teaches the traditional gospel that the only way to salvation, the only way to be free of guilt is through Jesus Christ, to accept Jesus Christ for your sins. And that when you accept Jesus Christ, you'll be forgiven of your, of your sin. This man who killed 46 men with his own hands has a problem. He has a big problem with the traditional gospel of Christianity, and that's this. Those 46 men that he killed, according to tradition, I have a feeling, I'm not sure, but I have a feeling they were probably Muslims. They were unbelievers in Christ. And according to the traditional gospel, those 46 men are now in hell. They're going to be tortured forever. They're going to be estranged from God forever. And there is no hope, according to the traditional gospel, of them coming to salvation. They're gone. According to the traditional gospel, <clears throat> only on this side of the grave is there hope for salvation and hope for forgiveness and hope for a chance of going to heaven. This pastor was stuck. This pastor was looking to find a way to give this person hope and he had none. Because you see, that soldier who killed us 46 people. The traditional gospel says, just accept Jesus Christ, he will forgive you of your sins, and you will have eternal life. 
But justice in that man's heart says, that's not fair. I killed 46 men. And those 46 men, <clears throat> according to the traditional gospel, are going to be burned alive forever and ever without hope. The fact that this man is being offered a, a free escape card to have eternal life simply by saying a few words, and these 46 men that he killed have no hope, have no escape, that is such a gross injustice. And any heart that has a little bit of sense of justice and compassion can see that this gospel, this thing is not fair. And so this man's heart is condemning him and preventing him from receiving that forgiveness because of the injustice of having a situation where, the, where those 46 men, there's no hope for them. And that is the gospel of the traditional church. That is the gospel of Protestantism. That is the gospel of Catholicism. That is the gospel of orthodoxy. But it's not the true gospel. The true gospel is that Jesus Christ is indeed the savior of all men. Jesus Christ has the keys to death and hell. Jesus Christ opens the doors of prisoners in Hades, in the unseen world. He has the ability to resurrect the just and the unjust, and Jesus Christ will draw ultimately all mankind unto himself. That is the victorious